think it's an important distinction to make, and this is why the left cannot come to agreements. This is where we can't find common ground, we can't see eye to eye if we're not even starting with the same uh, premise as to what a right is. And we'll go through a few examples, and I would like to see your comments here on YouTube or, uh, or send us your, your tweets at S. Crowder, at, yeah. uh, at Not Gay Jared, with what you think are actual rights versus commodities, understanding the difference. So what is a right? Let's define this first. It's a just claim or title, whether legal, prescriptive, or moral, according to dictionary.com. Now, in the USA, the beauty of that is it's prescribed by the Constitution. Pretty so we we'll say, well, yeah. how is it legal prescriptive? Yeah. So it can be different, but human rights, they are based in natural rights. In the USA, they're prescribed clearly in the Constitution. Okay, what's a commodity? Now, to clarify, I know some people say well, a commodity tends to be a raw sort of resource, like iron, ore, or gold. We're using a broader definition here, the ec economic commodities. Okay, economic commodities and services. In economics, a commodity is a marketable item produced to satisfy wants or needs, and it can comprise of either goods or services. So this is where I think we, we have some disconnects. Let's go through some examples of, of things that people assume our rights. Human right to health care. Health care. Okay. What's your right? You have the right to take any legal measures you deem necessary to ensure your own personal health. That includes access, ability to purchase services of your choosing. No one should be able to impede you from seeking the healthiest life yep. possible. There you go. That seems pretty straightforward. What's a commodity? Well, a drug, a treatment, or services created at the risk or investment of a business owner, like health insurance programs based around the concept of an aggregated risk pool balanced with offsetting costs and premiums or deductibles. The average annual cost of health care is uh, about 10,000, I think, something, 10,000 something dollars. I don't have the yeah, stat in front yeah. of me. That's a commodity. Hey, I have a right to health. Sure, you have a right to be healthy. I have a right to your Advil. No, you, no, you have to pay for Advil. No. Why? Because someone paid to create that Advil. That's a commodity. Education. That's declared a right often from the left. Okay, what's your right? Sure, you have a right to educate yourself. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. To learn, to be unimpeded in pursuing your higher education thereof, or your personal education, that's your right. But what would be a commodity? Um, a degree, maybe, from a university whose cost is determined based on a quality of teaching, track records of uh, gra graduate, their viabilities, the flexibility of the services offer offered by the school. The average annual cost to in public state colleges, somewhere around 25,000. I think a private college is close to 50,000. So. Again, that costs somebody something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It costs the professor. He had to get a degree. He had to get training to become highly specialized to teach at Harvard. You do not have, you have a right to educate yourself. Go to the library, read on the internet, use Bing if you want, whatever your preference <laughs> is. You don't have a right to force somebody else to teach you for Absolutely. free. Right commodity. Okay, let's go to internet. We just had uh, Thomas Hayslett to talk about net neutrality. So this one seems to be confusing to people. Let's go through remedial. You have the right, sure, with the internet to be unimpeded in the purchase of internet access, and I would even uh, say including protection from dishonest inhibitory actions from an internet service provider. Good thing is, those are already protected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I tr we care. have these with monopoly laws in the government right now. So that would be your right to go get the internet that you want, the internet mm -hmm. plan that you want. That is your right. What's a commodity? The internet or broadband access <laughs> packages themselves. Now a key term in economics, it's, it's excludable. That means non-paying consumers can't access it, and rivalrous means that additional consumers increase the cost significantly. That's why net neutrality matters. These terms, excludable, rivalrous, tend to reoccur uh, when it comes to dealing with commodities. You mean I don't get HBO for free? Yeah, yeah, you don't get on there for free. You don't get HBO Go for free. <laughs> contraceptives, this is a new one, but <laughs> contraceptives, it's a right, right? It's a human right, contraceptives. Okay, well, let's even go with this. You have the right to access and purchase any contraceptives of your choosing. I'll agree, no one should bar you from buying one buying a rubber at a truck stop or an IUD, I don't care. What's a commodity? The contraceptive. <laughs> Birth control pills, <laughs> condoms, IUDs, they don't just fall out of the sky. Someone invented them, often a man. <laughs> so this is, this is, a right protects your ability to pursue something. It ne a right almost never guarantees or forces somebody else to provide you with something. Yes. That's yeah. important. And I know we're, we've gotten off the beam now with contraceptives. People are like, well, that's only the extreme leftist social justice warriors. So, okay, let's go to one that almost everyone seems on board with. Water. People say, well, it should be the most basic human right is water. Okay, sure. Your right. What is your right? Do you have the right to consume or utilize any non-privately owned water? I don't think anyone should be barred from accessing water. The antelope can go get water. He risks being torn apart by a lion, and that makes for great TV, but it's his <laughs> right. Now, what would be a commodity? 
Well, maybe water itself, if it's filtered, sanitized, pumped directly into your place of dwelling through an intricate system of pipes and technology. It didn't happen for free. You have the right to water. You don't have the right to force somebody to pay to clean and sanitize your water. It matters because everyone has some kind of a lens through which they see the world. The ism matters. Yes. Uh, and if you look at actually on the flip side, rights that conservatism fights for, rights that right now conservatives are fighting for most actively. I think we would probably agree conservatives, when you're talking about rights, they're most actively fighting right now for probably probably freedom of speech and guns. Yeah. Guns Those are two big and, issues. Uh, protection of life. I would say, yeah, protection of life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's start with freedom of speech. All right. So conservatives are actively fighting for that right. Well, okay. First off, how do you know it's your right? Where, where is that prescribed? Uh, Amendment number one, right? <laughs> Freedom of speech, it's in the Constitution. It actually talks about free speech. Now, here's something, too, that's important to note. When conservatives fight for freedom of speech, even if you see the controversy with YouTube having censored some of our content or Facebook, you'll see a lot of conservatives say they actually have the right to do that. And we agree with that. They just don't have the right to lie to consumers about it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bad business practices, that's a different issue. But conservatives understand that we have the right to speak freely and are fighting for it. It's a right that the left doesn't believe in. They don't believe in it. Uh, professors don't believe in it. And I'm not just talking about in specific areas or instances. They don't believe in a generalized absolute right to free speech. We do. When we're fighting for it, we're fighting for the right to speak freely, fully understanding that we are not going to be paid to speak freely. Look at guns. What do we, we believe? Okay, we believe that we have the right to keep and bear guns. It's a right that, that liberals don't believe in, right? So this, this is important. The fun, stay with me here. We believe that we have the right to own and keep guns. Well, where'd you get that from? Well, it's amendment number two. <laughs> so right now we're, we're just going through number one and two, sweetheart. <laughs> Bill of Rights. Are you still tracking, sweetheart? <laughs> okay, so there's at least, you, we're making the declarative statement, we have the right to keep and bear arms. That's the right we fight for. And like freedom of speech, we're just fighting for the ability to have them. We're not protesting Smith & Wesson to give us free guns. <laughs> and that's a fundamental difference in worldview because we look at the rights that then liberals declare that they're rights. Healthcare, education, water, shelter, basic universal income, right? You say, well, hold on, well, how do you know those are rights? Uh, I don't, we'll just file it all under the general welfare clause. It's nowhere in the Constitution. Gets me elected. The, the ones that we describe <laughs> are there by name. Yeah. Theirs don't even exist. But let's even go with it. Okay, you put it under the general welfare clause. Sure, okay, you have the right to pursue health care. Of course, yeah, you, we believe in the right to access to water. Sure, you have the right to purchase birth control. No, they are taking rights that don't exist, filing them under a term that was not meant for that, and then fighting for the right to force you and I to pay for it through our tax dollars. That is a fundamental worldview difference. The rights that are outlined and prescribed as per our legal documents, they don't even believe exist. What about freedom of speech? It's hate speech! What about the Second Amendment? Ah, Ruger makes too much money! <laughs> oh, so what, you don't believe those are rights? No! I think I should have a right to a 25 cent rubber at a truck stop and you should pay for it. This is something <laughs> that matters so <laughs> much because if you start off from a point where you don't even understand the difference between a right or a commodity, I don't, if it just gets to you replace right with something I want, well then rights would be ever changing and guess what, things that rights would infringe on other rights because everyone has different things that they want. Right, when I was a teenager, I wanted Elle McPherson and my wall poster to come to life, but it wasn't my right. Guess what, for her, she'd feel like her rights were infringed upon. <laughs> she As she should. As she should. Terrible. That is important. You can send some other examples if you think that I'm wrong. Rights versus economic commodities. Anytime someone just says something's a right and they declare it, call them on it. Well, where do you find that? And how do you justify it? Most of the time, they can't. Hey, this video is taken as a clip from the full show, daily show at lotterwithcredit.com slash mug club, where it's available exclusively $69 a year. That's less than $6 a month, less than two expensive cups of coffee, or you can feed an African child, but why would you want to just buy coffee or join the mug club? Daily show, lotterwithcredit.com slash mug club. See you there. Don't feed children.